the lesbian murderer. Hi, and welcome to our channel. Are you ready to dive into one of the most ghastly cases in history? In this video, we'll be exploring the shocking and gruesome murder of Edward Baldock by Tracy Avril Wigginton, also known as the lesbian vampire killer. This case captured the attention of the world and left even the most seasoned investigators shaken to their core. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and get ready to be captivated by the twisted tale of the lesbian vampire killer. Who was Tracy Wigginton, and what motivated her to commit such a heinous crime? Was she truly a vampire, or was it all a twisted fantasy? These are just a few of the questions that we'll be exploring in this video. So stay tuned and get ready to have your mind blown by one of the most bizarre and disturbing cases in history. Tracy Wigginton was born on August 4, 1965 in Rockhampton, a coastal city in Northern Australia. At the age of three, she was adopted by her wealthy maternal grandparents, George and Avril Wigginton. After her mother could no longer care for her following a divorce, according to Wigginton, her grandparents were controlling and abusive, both physically and sexually. In 1981, Wigginton's grandparents passed away and left her with a large inheritance of $75,000, which is equivalent to over $310,000 in today's dollars. At the age of 15, Wigginton briefly moved back in with her mother, who did not accept her lesbianism. She then moved in with a family friend, who described her as a loving girl, gifted artist, and devout Catholic. However, following a miscarriage, Wigginton stopped attending Mass and began communicating with a white witch in Adelaide. After moving to Brisbane, she immersed herself in the occult, carrying black magic items on her person and using the blood of animals to draw occult symbols. It is believed that Wigginton, who had already killed and drank the blood of animals, had been planning for some time to escalate to murdering a man so that she could feed on him. The night of the murder was a dark and fateful one. As the sun set over Brisbane River, Tracy Wigginton and her accomplices, Lisa Pchatinsky, Kim Jervis, and Tracy Waugh, set out on a mission to find a victim. They'd been out drinking and driving around in Wigginton's Holden Commodore, searching for someone to satisfy Wigginton's alleged desire to feed on a human. As they prowled the streets, they came across Edward Baldock, a 47-year-old council worker and father of four who had been drinking heavily and was waiting for a taxi. Whether by offering him a lift or pretending to be a sex worker, the woman convinced Baldock to get into their car and drove him to a park on the banks of the river. The park was dark and quiet. The only sounds coming from the distant hum of traffic and the occasional rustle of leaves in the gentle breeze as Baldock undressed, Wigginton returned to the car to retrieve a knife. She then approached him from behind and plunged the blade into his flesh over and over again with a ferocity that was almost inhuman. Baldock tried to defend himself, but he was no match for Wigginton's strength and determination. She continued to stab him until he lay motionless on the ground, his blood seeping out into the grass and forming a dark, sticky pool. When Wigginton was satisfied that Baldock was dead, she did the unthinkable. She leaned down and drank his blood. Some say that she did it to fulfill her vampiric desires, while others believe that it was a twisted act of ritualistic sacrifice. Whatever the reason, it was a shocking and gruesome act that left investigators truly horrified. As the woman fled the scene, leaving Baldock's lifeless body behind, they probably thought they could avoid capture, but they had left behind a trail of evidence that would soon lead the authorities to their door. When the police arrived at the park, they found Baldock's neatly folded clothes and a shoe with Wigginton's bank card inside. The four women were quickly arrested, and Wigginton was the only one to plead guilty to charge of murder. The trial of the lesbian vampire killer was a media sensation with reporters and curious spectators flocking to the courthouse to catch a glimpse of the accused. Wigginton, who pleaded guilty to the charge of murder, became something of a celebrity, with people lining up to get her autograph and media outlets vying for her exclusive story. During the trial, Wigginton made headlines by claiming to have vampiric tendencies and saying to the media, it's hard to be famous, isn't it? 
a legend in my own mind. In 1991, she was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 13 years. As the investigation into the murder of Edward Baldock unfolded, law enforcement officials were left with more questions than answers. Despite Wigginton's confession and guilty plea, the true motivations behind the crime remain a mystery. One theory that emerged was that Wigginton's involvement in the occult may have played a role in the murder. According to those who knew her, Wigginton had a fascination with the supernatural and had been seen carrying black magic items and using animal blood to draw occult symbols. Some speculated that the murder may have been a twisted act of sacrifice or a misguided attempt to gain power through the occult. But other experts pointed to Wigginton's troubled past and her history of abuse as possible explanations for her behavior. As a young, adopted lesbian in a conservative community, Wigginton may have struggled to find acceptance and a sense of belonging. It's possible that the murder was a way for her to gain attention and assert her power in a world that seemed hostile and oppressive. The friends and family of the victim were understandably devastated by the loss of their loved one. In interviews with the media, they described Baldock as a kind and loving husband and father who had been taken from them in the most brutal and senseless of ways. They struggled to make sense of the crime and to understand why anyone would want to harm someone as good and decent as Baldock. But Wigginton's story didn't end there. After serving 21 years in prison, she was granted parole in 2012 and released. Since then, she has been involved in several incidents, including assaulting a fellow inmate and a prison officer, as well as threatening to kill a taxi driver. To this day, the case of the lesbian vampire killer remains one of the most bizarre in Australian history. Some believe that her claims of vampirism were simply a way to garner attention and fame, while others think that she may have been suffering from a mental illness. Despite the many questions that still surround this case, one thing is clear. The story of Tracy Avril Wigginton will continue to haunt us for years to come. It serves as a reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human mind and the unimaginable horrors that one person can inflict upon another. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the most perplexing cases in history. If you have any thoughts or questions, please share them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more chilling tales, unsolved mysteries, and haunted histories. Until next time, stay safe.